Moreno, Senior University President Father Bobby Chang, Father Bobby Yap, Forest Foundation Philippines Executive Director Attorney Ongi Manibel, other honored guests, participants from government, religious, indigenous peoples, grassroots, business academy, my dear students, ladies and gentlemen. May I add my welcome to those expressed earlier to the third Philippine Environment Summit and thank you also for not giving up on us. <laughs> we are really very happy to be holding this summit in the City of Smiles. That's what we know that CDO is. Or the City of Gold. The City of Golden Smiles then. But now the uh, model city of green programs. In environmental education, one of the main uh, techniques we use is visualizing or scenarioing. Thinking of the future with a certain identified feature or features. Let me ask you now to visualize a future, our summit in the future, without electricity. Our lighting will probably be by candlelight, or we will be holding it outside where there is light, and hopefully it won't rain and there will be breezes so that it will be not uncomfortable. Can you imagine it? Now imagine a future where we do not have coral reefs, forests, or insects. Can we hold summits still? Can we? Unfortunately, we will probably not be holding summits anymore because we might not be here. Or at least maybe just small bands of people will be around, scrounging around for um, whatever food they can find. Because as we know, especially the students, as you know, all life is dependent on insects which fertilize or pollinate plants and on which all life up the food chain depends. And all sea life is dependent on, or most sea life is dependent on coral reefs. So if we do not have these environmental items, we do not have life. So no summits. The first scenario, of course, emphasizes our, depend our dependence on the tools of modern living. While the second scenario emphasizes our total dependence on the natural environment. So what is more important? I guess that's a rhetorical question. We definitely, definitely need an environment where the basis of all life depends. Modern living is good, it's convenient, it gives us comfort, but that's uh, nice, and we hope that we can continue. And that is the challenge. To sustain the gains of societal evolution, man's inventiveness while preserving nature that sustains life. As we examine the technological, economic, social, and political systems that humans have developed, we see that we have disregarded the laws of nature or abused its generosity. We learned of the ways of nature through science but we have applied them through technology inappropriately. And now we have our vantage point, the science of ecology, 
which was not around when I was in college. You are lucky that you have it now, my dear students. Now the science of ecology reveals the need for holistic development, for integral development for humans. One of the features of a, of a holistic approach is the cyclical way of life. When we take from nature, we have to return to nature. We give back to nature. Unfortunately, we have been using the linear approach. We take, we use, and we let the waste take care of itself. For example, when using fossil fuels, we mine, we manufacture, and we throw, uh, throw up the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, accumulating there and giving us global warming. As consumers, we buy, we use, we throw away, the packaging accumulates in the environment. In this summit, we show the best practices of the circular way of life. In technology, we see how natural materials, for example, bamboo, can replace petroleum-derived synthetics, or even metals, which we must mine. Organic agriculture, for example, can replace chemical agriculture which uses synthetic fertilizers and pesticides coming from faraway places. In governance, we saw, we see how proper solid waste management, where we, we see proper solid waste management, where waste is reverted to new products, and this is done by model barang barangays and the LGUs. In culture, we see indigenous peoples showing us how traditions of living with nature and knowing its parameters can sustain life-giving environments indefinitely. For economic activities, we see how ecotourism would benefit the local community because local production, land, and resources are utilized much better than large-scale commercial tourism, which rely on large-scale transfer and production of materials, again, contributing to global warming. To support these endeavors, we need the right education and the right spiritual grounding. Some talks will be on that. And of course, while we look at reshaping our future, we can also, we should address the threats to our natural ecosystems, and we should look for the right climate policies and the right risk reduction management approaches. Ladies and gentlemen, we have assembled in these three days Experts will be speaking on these topics. There are men and women who have the experience and who will inform, educate, and guide you in your own reshifting of your own paradigm as you keep nature. Unfortunately, you will have a big challenge you will have the problem of choosing which among the concurrent sessions you will want to attend because they're all so good. Good luck in that endeavor. May I just make an appeal? In the concurrent sessions in the afternoons, please participate actively so that you can suggest